Hey there, Sun Folk. Uh, this is Sean, the uh, sign guy, and I uh, had a, uh, a request um, about our printer. Um, someone wanted some information. Um, this isn't the first question. We've actually had several people ask us, you know, what printer that we use. And um, so our printer is specifically called a Prism Jet 54. Um, it is. Um, sold by signwarehouse.com. Essentially, it's a rebranded Muto uh, 1324X. It's a 54-inch eco-solvent um, printer. Um, the big difference between the Prism Jet 54 and the 1324 by Muto is uh, the firmware. So, in, a, in essence, like I said, we got a better deal on this printer. Um, when we were going through, we needed a printer and a laminator when we were looking. Um, and I've dealt with Sun Warehouse for probably 25 years or better. Some people have problems with them. I've had nothing but great success with them. I have one rep that I always deal with, and her name is Rhonda Hughes. If you ever call, um, ask for Rhonda Hughes. She's in the sales department and she has gone above and beyond ever helping me out if I ever have a problem and even kind of get my foot in the door with tech support. Um, so um, with the Prism Jet, um, it still runs like a Muto. Everything inside is Muto. The inks are Muto. Um, the, the head is a um, uh, what is it? It's a uh, it's a DX7. It's an Epson DX7 print head. Just everything, the guts, the working, everything about the um, the casing, everything is Muto. The difference between the Prism Jet and the um, the Value Jet is the firmware. Um, so when I go to set up my RIP software, it's not going to see a Value Jet, a Muto Value Jet. It sees the Sun Warehouse Prism Jet. Um, that's the only big difference, really, and I saved about three thousand dollars when uh, when we got the printer. So, um, still uses uh, genuine Muto inks. Um, we use the two hundred and twenty cartridges. Um, they seem to work best for us. Um, I know they make four hundred and forties. I know they make bigger bags and other uh, contraptions for even more ink. Um, my personal opinion is um, these printers. Although they are workhorses, um, I don't know that I would ever utilize a thousand milliliter bag. Even a 440, I probably could justify the cost. You get the ink a little bit less, um, but I just don't have the room back behind the printer. So I stick with the 220 cartridges. You can get them from Fellers, you can get them from Sign Warehouse. Um, I know that there are probably some other places where you can get your your genuine Muto ink, and I know that there are other people that sell third-party inks. Uh, I have no dealings or experience with third-party inks, um, and the, the reason why is because um, if, if I need technical support or whatever, and, and this is from, well, I shouldn't say this, but this is from their mouth, um, that third-party ink is not worth using. Um, it causes actually more problems down the road. So. Keep that in mind, do your due diligence, do your own research before you venture into doing something like that. Um, again, I personally, uh, I run Muto Inks. Um, if you know what you're doing, then, you know, fine, go for it. But uh, moving on to, uh, to the printer. So this is, you know, essentially uh, a roundabout Muto. And so when you go to set your, your RIP settings up, and I guess RIP would be, um, I use Flexi 12. Um, and Flexi 12 in a whole Flexi the program has multiple uh, printer drivers and uh, multiple cutter drivers. Everything from Epson, HP, um, SureColor, um, I don't know, Mamakis, you know, Flexi has all those drivers for, um, for just about any type of printer that's out there. That's, that's the great thing. Um, so if you kind of go that route, um, you know, it's kind of a good thing. It gives you more flexibility between, uh, selecting your hardware. So you have your software. If you're, if you're good with using, um, you know, illustrator, which I'm not, um, I'm sure that there's a plugin, you know, for whatever specific printer that, that you want to, um, to use. And I know that there's Onyx rip software, like above and beyond and VersaWorks and, uh, Roland, but I use Flexi 
Um, it makes it easier for me because it's one screen that sets everything up. So my cutter is in the rip and my printer is in the rip. And so I just, when I send it, everything just seamlessly works. And I love how it works and it's very easy to, uh, for me to do. Um, so with the Muto edition, I know that they sell a version of Flexi. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it, how it works. I know it was a Muto edition Flexi sign and print. So it has the rip built in, but I don't know if that means that if you're buying the Muto printer that it's proprietary to just running a Muto printer. Um, I don't know that you could ever upgrade to say a, a Roland printer, you know, with that same software, or depending on what color the cutter that you want to use. Um, so, you know, that, that's totally up to you guys. You have to do your research. I know what works for me. Like I said, I don't like to change things if it works. Um, fine. I don't care. Like I said, I'm just one of those people. Once I learn it, I learn it and, and I just kind of stick with it. And I'm not one of those guys that kind of hops around to the new latest and greatest thing. Um, because personally, I, I just can't invest, you know, that kind of money into doing stuff like that, you know, and if it works, it works and, and I'm comfortable and my workflow works really well for, for what we do. Um, so the, the printer, we've had this specific printer for about three years now. Um, we bought it as an upgrade to another Muto. We had an old 1204, which is the 50 inch Eco Sullivan printer. And that was actually a Muto that was sold through Sign Warehouse, but Sign Warehouse was the only ones that sold the 50 inch, um, printers, if that makes any sense. So, um, but we also got the Q54 cutter. The Q54 cutter is a rebranded GraphTech 8600, um, again, at substantial savings. And the difference between that is, again, it's GraphTech guts through and through, parts, everything else. The difference is in the firmware. So when I pull up Flexi, it doesn't say GraphTech 8600. It says Sun Warehouse Q-Series 54. And I really don't care. Um, so... Uh, we save thousands and thousands of dollars. When I say thousands, we probably save, I don't know, six, seven thousand dollars by, by doing it that way. But again, it's all in, uh, you know, how you guys, um, you know, perceive things. If you have to have that, then fine, so be it. So, um, with the printer being about three years old, um, any issues? So, as long as the printer runs, and when I say run, it needs to, I mean, it needs to run. You need to print. Like I said, it doesn't make money um, sitting idle. And um, so the printer, you know, you need to be printing, you know, your wraps, your stickers, your banners, wh whatever it is, um, you know, at least three or four hours a day, bare minimum, you know, but these things are made to run, you know, eight to 10 hours a day. Um, and when we, when we first got it, we were doing a lot of that stuff. Um, we were doing a lot of wraps, a lot of banners, a lot of in-house printing. Um, but since we kind of shifted gears, I really don't do that much anymore. Um, our business has kind of changed. We've scaled back a lot, but I still need the printer and I still have to utilize it because if I let it sit idle, then it's just going to be a big paperweight. Um, inks dry up, heads are 2,500 bucks, dampers aren't cheap. Maintenance stations aren't cheap. Um, about three months ago, we started developing a clicking issue, whereas where the printhead, I would open this up, but then the fan comes on. Um, so when the printhead would travel and it would stop, it would click. It would go, uh, you know, click, 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 and I'll cue in the video here. And essentially what that was is there's a spring over here on this side um, that just needed to tighten back up. It wasn't that big of a deal. The beauty was is that because we bought all of our equipment through Sign Warehouse, um, I went back through them and I explained to them, gave them a little video of what was going on, and they tell me exactly what needed to be done. So I needed to clean the rails, tighten that piece up. Um, you know, it's just a little screw with a spring on it, and it just provides tension on the belt. It makes it pretty easy, but I was having dropout. Um, to where there was a heavy saturation of black, um, it would actually, it, it would just kind of fade out. And so it, it would, uh, and I'll cue that picture in here. So that's kind of what I was dealing with. And the two kind of went hand in hand, but now I, I think that I'm going to probably replace um, some of the dampers on this printer here in the next three or four months. Um, 
again, because I don't use the printer near as much as what we what we used to or as what I should, um, it, it essentially costs us money. Um, and when a printer sits, um, it goes through a cleaning cycle. This printer is set to about every eight hours, it goes through a cycle to where the pump runs, um, it draws ink from the print head down into the maintenance station, and it just constantly keeps that ink circulating so that it doesn't dry up, because if it dries up, then you create the mess. Um, our cleaning schedule is set to the shortest amount of time, which is eight hours. Um, or is that the longest amount of time? The longest amount of time, I guess, between cleaning cycles. So this thing cleans itself, I think, three times a day. Yeah, it's essentially eight, eight, every eight hours. Um, but when it cleans itself, um, that is probably the biggest waste of money that you're going to encounter when you get one of these printers. Um, I've got two... <clears throat> I have two jugs here, and this is a half gallon, and this is a full gallon, and there is, uh, there's about two thirds in here. When I moved this printer down last May, that's May of 2019, where are we in, 21 now? It's 2020, I'm sorry, so when I moved the printer down in 2020, I did a full clean, cleaned out the uh, little uh, waste tank down there, and I started with this guy. And then today is June uh, 11th. Um, I emptied it out again. So about 13 months, this is the amount of waste ink that the printer produces. Um, waste ink probably isn't that big of a deal until I tell you that this is almost a thousand dollars worth of ink. So um, again, when the printer runs, you make money. When it sits, you're basically just throwing your money away. Other than that, the printer does what it needs to do. It's a good printer. Um, <clears throat> it's a good printer. Um, you know, the, there's a lot of profiles out there with a lot of different media. Um, we specifically use, we, I, um, use essentially four different profiles. Um, the printer has a capability of printing, I think it's 14, 1440 by 1440 DPI. Um, which is ridiculous. Um, I don't know where you would ever be in a situation, in, in a signed situation, maybe in a fine arts, um, you would use that kind of resolution, but um, we typically print, and I keep saying we, I typically print 540 by 720. It's an Oracle profile. It gives me enough speed, gives me enough saturation to where I would say 75% of all the printing that I do um, is on that profile. Uh, I also have a 720 by 720, which is a, it's kind of like a higher step. Uh, it's a higher step up with, with a little tighter duct pattern, creates a little bit crisper image, but it lays down a lot more ink. So when you're looking at longevity of, of prints, if someone asks me, how long is your stuff going to last? Um, it kind of depends on what they're paying. If they want something cheap, and they only need it for to last about two or three years, I'm printing on the 540 by 720. If this is a full color wrap that I know is going to be outdoors, um, I price it accordingly and I print 720, 720. Um, very rarely do I print anything above that just because my eyes can't tell the difference. And the only thing that uh, you really sacrifice is speed. Um, you know, when Muto or Sun Warehouse, when they talk about print speeds on these machines, um, I take it with a grain of salt. It really doesn't matter, you know, because uh, they, they can talk numbers. I think their their fastest print speed was like 550, 565. Hold on. I have a little cheat sheet here. So, and this is off the off of uh, directly off of Muto's uh, website. So their fastest printer speed. It's 565 square feet per hour at 360 by 360 DPI. That may sound pretty good. Um, I guess with the right profile, it might look okay, but that's like billboard quality stuff. I mean, that's like serious banding. Um, I, I probably wouldn't use that in a production setting. And um, I mean, may, maybe you will, I don't know. But essentially I use four profiles. I do have a 1440. Um, 1447 20 profile 
um, that occasionally I'll, I'll use and, and the colors come out a little bit differently, but essentially the 540, 720 and the 720, 720 profile, I believe they're both through, uh, no, 720s that work out and the 540, 720, that one is actually a banner profile. Um, but the, the great thing is that there's, there's so many different profiles out there and it's so easy to tune and kind of manipulate that stuff with Flexi, but that also comes back to the place where you buy the, the printer from, is making sure that you have the, the adequate support to make sure that your results are satisfactory, you know, to, to kind of what you expect. Um, we really didn't do a lot of trial and error with, with this printer, you know, it was kind of like they told us everything that we needed and everything, you know, for the most part worked the way that it should. The colors come out pretty dang accurate. My purples are nice and vibrant. Um, my reds are red. Um, you know, I can hit the lime greens, and so I really don't have much of a problem. Um, but primarily, I design an RGB as well. Um, I design an RB, RGB, and I export an RGB as well. Um, so that kind of covers a little bit of the profiles uh, a little bit there. So I already talked about some of the issues that we've had. Um, again, I talked about the inks, and um, the uh, I guess the only other thing is the... Uh, you know, the, the maintenance schedule that, that we keep on on this printer. So the, they should be cleaned at least two times a week. Um, and I'd say that's the like the bare minimum. I'm guilty um, for waiting about two weeks because I don't utilize this printer that much. I may print for maybe two or three hours a week and it's almost to the point where um, I'm, I'm I'm honestly considering going to an outsource instead of actually dealing with the printer um, just because, you know, the inks and the consumables and all the media and, you know, all that other stuff. There, there's a lot of money wrapped up in that. So, um, yeah, you know, the, the, the maintenance is, is a big thing. It's, it's pretty easy to do. Um, basically, you have some text swabs and you've got some cleaning solution. And essentially, you dip the swab in the cleaning solution. Um, there's a couple buttons that you press here on the control panel, um, and this is really easy to use. It's very user friendly to understand this. Um, but uh, press a couple buttons, open this uh, this lid up. The head carriage will slide all the way over to the side. Um, Muto has, and now that I open this, so the fan's going to come on. Um, it has this little door here where you can see uh, actually up underneath. The, um, the print head, now that it's on, um, so you can see up underneath the print head so you can go ahead and clean it and everything. Never touch the print head, never, never touch the print head. Um, you clean around it, um, you clean the top of the maintenance station, um, might take you maybe two or three minutes every cleaning. And um, it, it's worth it because it keeps everything nice and clean, especially um, the seals, uh, so they don't dry out. You get uh, proper seals. You get uh, you know proper suction because that's this print system actually works off of a vacuum system. Um, so uh, I guess that in a nutshell, this shop actually gets really dusty. So um, I really need to clean it. I really should clean it about once a week, even though they only print for about two or three hours uh, a week with it. Um, but uh, yeah, so. All in all, it's been a great printer. Would I buy another one? If I was in the market and I did more printing, absolutely. There's other brands out there. I know that HP has their latex. I know nothing about it. I've heard good things and bad things about it. Um, I know that there's other manufacturers. There's Epson, there's Mamakis, there's Rollins. Um, and to each their own. You know, there's, there's a printer out there with a specific need for whoever you know, whoever's buying it. Um, you know, this one just kind of fit our needs. It's well-rounded. It's not perfect in one specific category, but it prints on a wide range of media. Um, everything from carpet graphics to, um, you know, we can print on the window perf, we can print on fabric, we can print banners, we can print, you know, adhesive wraps and the whole nine yards. So there's nothing that this printer can't print on except for carpet. Um, but I think you're asking a little much if that's what you're kind of looking for, and I don't really recommend it. But um, no, it's a good printer. Would I uh, would I recommend it? Yeah, I, I'd recommend a Muto um, because I'm partial. But I've never uh, I've never owned a Roland. I've never owned any of the other brands, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, 
So uh, I hope that helped you guys out. Um, if you have any other questions or if I missed something or if I didn't really touch on something that you'd like to, um, I apologize, but I have a tendency to ramble a little bit. So I'm trying to go through a little list here. And um, so I appreciate you guys tuning in, the watch hours and the likes. And, um, you know, hopefully if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe to it because... Uh, I've got a lot of dumb information sitting up here and no one to share it with. So um, you know, stick around and like I said, if you have any other questions or um, you know, need to know about anything else, I'd be more than happy to help you guys. Um, until then, we'll see you next time.